Denise Duchenne served in the California Assembly and Senate until she was termed out in 2010. Now she is running against Juan Vargas to represent the 51st Congressional District in Washington. Welcome, Denise. So, Imperial County has the highest unemployment rate in the country. I think it's at 26.8 percent. What are your Absolutely. ideas to turn that around? <clears throat> well, you know, there's several things there that, that need to happen. Number one is we need, just as we do in San Diego, to reduce border wait times and invest in the infrastructure at the Calexico border crossing. They need to renovate that crossing. We need to be able to move that traffic in to, to do buying and, and shopping and uh, all of those things. We need to continue to work on things like the new geothermal projects that just broke ground that we worked on when I was in the legislature that are breaking ground now, renewable energy projects. Uh, and we need to maintain their agricultural economy uh, and start building again. We need to get people, uh, finish these foreclosures, uh, move that market and and frankly there were a lot of construction jobs in Imperial County up to four or five years ago. In 2010 you were appointed to the California Unemployment Insurance State Appeals Board. These state boards have come under intense criticism. They're, they've been called a waste of taxpayers money, um, unnecessary, successive governors have tried to get rid of them. How do you respond to that criticism? Well you know I was there for a lot of those debates and we went through them. We scoured through a lot of them and we we made recommendations on several. Um, many of these boards are specially funded and, and have to do with you know regulating uh, industries. This one in particular is a due process board. It's been in place since the 1940s when we first received unemployment insurance and it uh, is a board that serves an appellate capacity. If there are different ways to do it, you still have to find a way to do due process and frankly would be way more expensive in this case to go to court, which is what people would have to do if you didn't have those board and those judges in place to, to do that work. You're an immigration attorney. You say immigration issues are a big reason why you got into this race. As you know, the Republicans and the Democrats are far apart on immigration when it comes to yeah. a guest worker program, when it comes to the DREAM Act. If you were elected, how would you close the gap? Well, I'm hopeful that we can restart the discussion. You know, we were very close to a deal in 07. The Kennedy-McCain uh, framework, I think, was was sound. Uh, but there are other ways to look at it, and I'm hopeful to bring that practitioner's perspective that says, let's just throw out and talk about what ought to be quotas. It doesn't make any sense that countries like Mexico and Canada have the same quota as countries like Norway and South Africa. Let's be realistic about what our quotas are, what our workforce ought to look like, and we need to have both temporary visas and permanent visas, and we need to revisit the structure, basically, of what the visas are and simplify things. Your opponent, State Senator Juan Vargas, has received tens of thousands of dollars from the insurance and pharmaceutical industries. I read an editorial recently saying that if he were elected to Congress, that if health care reform went back to Congress for some reason, that he would vote against it. Um, do you hold <clears throat> that view? You know, I, I can't speak for him. I, I am very concerned about the fact that he seems very beholden to insurance industry, which, you know, going from, ins you know, he talks about my, my role at a state service really in, in, on the unemployment board uh, you know but he went from being assembly chair to being insurance executive insurance assembly insurance chair to being assembly insurance executive and now is back with insurance who spent two million dollars to elect him to the state senate last year uh, in a district he does happen to live in unlike this congressional district I don't know what their ambition would be in Congress uh, but the notion that those interests are always there and his other one now is banking uh, and, and again, he's stopping the Homeowners' Bill of Rights because of the banking interests who support him. In 15 seconds, the June primary is right around the corner. There haven't yeah. been any debates. Why is that? You know, Senator Vargas canceled on both of them. They were scheduled. There was one scheduled here in March, one scheduled with KGTV in April. Uh, I had them on my calendar starting in January, uh, and Mr. Vargas canceled each of them the week before they were to occur. We have to close it there. Denise Tuchenny, thank you for speaking to us.